presents you to the following presentation of the National Football League. So Dak Prescott got hurt in week one. Cooper Rush comes in. He's 2-0 and since. And Aaron Andrews, he looks completely in control. He sure does. Now let's talk a little bit about Cooper Rush. You know, he's been on this Dallas Cowboys roster for five years, or as he put it, what feels like a lifetime. Of course, he's been on and off this roster. It's been an up-and-down career for him. He's been cut. He's been re-signed. He's even been out of the league. He said all of that has given him new perspective. He's mentally stronger. He's not afraid to fail. And, of course, with a win, today he could become the first Dallas quarterback to start their career 4-0 as he told me this is where I want to be this is what I was meant to do it sure looks like it I'll tell you that and Washington's won the toss they defer Cowboys will get it first and here we go from Arlington as Dallas will start on the 25 and we go down to Tom Rinaldi well, Kevin, slow starts have been a huge problem for Washington so far. Outscored 46 to zero before halftime of its last two games. They'll need a defensive stop to start. But offensively, look for them to try to get number one wide receiver Terry McLaurin a lot more involved. Just one catch for a total of nine yards in three first halves so far. Talking to McLaurin pregame and during the week, he said there are plans to get him more involved. He just wants to win. We'll see how that unfolds in a key matchup in this one, guys. No doubt. Meanwhile, start on the ground to the Cowboys with Ezekiel Elliott and a solid game. He's going to get four and a half yards on first down. So you heard Aaron talking about Cooper Rush. He's played three games as a starting quarterback, one of them last year. He's won them all. It's only the third time it's happened in their history. No one's won four in a row, but it's amazing. He's in complete command, as you talked about. This is one of those examples right here, KB. They give him such freedom at the line of scrimmage. Very similar to when Dax in there. Second down. Can't find anyone. And then just going to throw it away. The presence of mind to throw it away. Well, you're talking about the in-command. Explain a little bit more how yeah, so. So often when a backup quarterback comes in, regardless of their experience in the league or the time they've been with the team, there's usually a watered-down version of what the offense looks like when they're in versus the typical starter. But when you watch Dallas these last two weeks with – with Cooper Rush at quarterback, there's a ton of check with Mies, which is what you just saw him there, getting in and out of certain plays. You're going to see him do a lot of communication at the line of scrimmage. That's the true test of how much a staff and coaches believe in their backup quarterback. Third down here. Rush has time. Can't find it. Elliott's wide open. He's going to walk to a first down and more. That's Elliott turning it on into Washington territory and rumbling his way inside the 40. Monster gain for Elliott in 31 yards and a first down. Yeah. What a great job. We just talked about Cooper Rush, his, his poise, his ability. But watch this protection in the pocket. The left guard, Connor McGovern, he's back from injury. This is a very good defensive front. They can really get after the passer. He's got plenty of time. He goes through all the way down to his check down. In this case, the running back, Ezekiel Elliott, does a nice job run after catch. Good poise in the pocket, but great protection with the offensive line. They'll run it to Elliott here, and there's not much doing. So this offense, you mentioned Connor McGovern is back at left guard. He's been out since week one. Well, there's a couple other things, too. Dalton Schultz, he's returned from an injury back at tight end. And Michael Gallup, back for the first time since tearing his ACL at the end of last season. Yeah, I mean, of course the DAC injury week one was a, was a big blow. Your quarterback, your franchise player. But they're getting very healthy around. This offense is getting very healthy around Cooper Cup. The offensive line, you mentioned getting Connor McGovern back. They'll run it here. Elliott left side. You saw Gallup number 13. And, you know, without Amari Cooper, who's now on the Cleveland Browns, C.D. Lamb's the number one. Gallup back is a huge boom to this offense. And we'll see what he can do his first time back. Yeah, he's, if he can get good protection, he's got two really good running backs, right? We've seen Zeke already make an impact in the game. Tony Pollard, we'll see him throughout the course. He's in there now. He's got a lot of good weapons. The wide receiver core, as you mentioned, they're really starting to grow as they look to replace Amari Cooper. Cooper Rush got a lot of things that he can work with. Third and seven. Rush back over the middle, coming near side Pollard, and that's an excellent tackle by Holcomb. 
to bring Pollard down four yards short of the first down. In field goal range, though. And they'll send Brett Maher out. It was six for seven on the early season. This will be a 53 yarder from Maher. He was good for 59 in warmups. Got to get the Cowboys on the board in the opening drive. And he draws it in there nicely. So an opening drive, big play to Zeke Elliott. Three nothing lead for Dallas as Maher gets him going. And when we come back, it's Carson Wentz's turn. Mike McCarthy likes to start. Yeah, especially coming off of last week's game in Philly, nine sacks given up. You know that unit up front, they've been challenged all week. And so we'll see how they hold up. Here today in Texas, Cowboys with a nice drive. Go down the field, seven plays, 40 yards. Brett Maher, 53-yard field goal, and now it's Washington's turn. Dax Milne back deep. He'll let it go, and they will start on the 25-yard line with Carson Wentz, his third team in the last three years. You know, you forget at times because of his journey the last few years and the injuries he's dealt with. This is a Pro Bowl quarterback, but now he's really got to prove it at this stage of his career. Yeah, and one of the things Washington has been searching for these last three years since Ron Rivera took over is that stability at the quarterback position. They went out, made a little bit of a controversial move, bringing in Carson Wentz, especially at his price tag. He played really well in week one, pretty well in week two. Last week, took a little step back. They want to see him get back to what we saw a little earlier in the year, especially against this Dallas defense. Antonio Gibson going to get the handoff and working forward up across the 29-yard line, four-yard gain. Well, it, one thing's pretty clear. In talking to Ron Rivera and the Washington coach this week, they all said the same thing. We've got to run the ball better. They just haven't at all. They haven't. They, they have not. They haven't done it very much. They've been a very pass heavy team on first and second down. Expect that to change today. Dallas a little bit more lighter boxes. Don't play with as many linebackers and defensive linemen as some other teams. But they've got to stay ahead of the chains. They've got to stay out of drop back passing situations. That's where Dallas is at their best. They run it again. This time the other side. Good hole for Gibson who surges forward for a first down. It's a good start. Two runs and a first down to get that crown game going. And we already mentioned Dallas defensively. They get to the quarterback better than anyone, but they've really taken a leap in year two. Dan Quinn did a great job last year. This year, they might be even better. You, I know it's early, but I know you like what you see. They have, and when we had a chance to speak with Dan Quinn, he mentioned, he said, last year we were so dependent on rushing the passer and takeaways, and he's like, that's always going to be our, our hallmark here. But we've got to get better in other areas. That's what we've seen so far early in this season. And even though the takeaway numbers maybe aren't what we're used to on pace last year, they're just so balanced. They're so good at so many different things. Wentz to throw for the first time. Pumps gets it over the middle. Gibson's got the catch out to the 40. Got a short game. By the way, don't adjust your sets if you're just tuning in and you're thinking this is, you know, Washington, Dallas. And you're like, wait, what? Is, what is this? These are the first time you're going to see the alternate uniforms for Washington. And it's, uh, it's different. All black with the gold trim. So yes, you did turn on the right game. Don't want you to be confused. Second down and seven. Wentz on the fake. Gets it outside. There's McLaurin who makes the catch for a first down. You hear Tom Rinaldi saying he's been invisible in the first half, so an effort to get him the ball early. Yeah, and I think this is what you were going to see a lot today. Early downs, though they consider those little quick passes to Curtis Samuel, Terry McLaurin. To them, that's just an extension of what they want to do with the run game. Gives them an ability to keep this pass rush at bay. Something we're also going to see a lot of is tempo. It keeps defensive coaches out of some of their more exotic blitzes, some of the more exotic pass rush personnel groups. So expect to see Washington mix in that tempo and go no huddle, even on first and second down. Jonathan Williams in the game at running back. Going to give it to him. He'll get a chance. And not much. Give Williams a couple, spelling Antonio Gibson. And so Mike McCarthy has done a nice job. You know, everyone, it felt like the 
the sky was falling week one. They looked terrible in a loss to Tampa Bay, right? The offense couldn't do anything. Dak Prescott got hurt, and then very quietly they've gone at it with their backup quarterback and won the last two games and looked very good doing it. Yeah, and for whatever reason, Mike McCarthy comes under fire. I know coaching here in Dallas is not easy. There's a lot of expectations, a lot of pressure, but he deserves a ton of credit to keep this team on track after losing the week one, losing your starter and the game. Mike McCarthy deserves a lot of credit for keeping this team where they are right now. First flag, Sean Smith, our referee today. False start. Offense number 53. Five-yard penalty. Second down. It's on Trey Turner, the right guard. Yeah, so these are the things that Washington's been kind of shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. They find themselves now behind the change, second and, ten, second and 12. Expect this down. Try to get half, right? Put us into a third and manageable type situation as they go empty. And yeah, we got J.D. McKissick, the running back, as a wide out at the bottom of your screen against Diggs. Wentz looking the other way. In trouble, and he is buried. Neville Gallimore came through almost unblocked for the big sack. Nice little pressure there. They walked up Vander Esch into the one A gap. You're going to see, for whatever reason, Nick Martin, the center, goes, and they just blow the, they just blow the protection. Gallimore's unblocked. All it was was a simple Mike linebacker pressure. You see Vander Esch, 55. Nick Martin does a nice job sliding. Trey Turner, he's got to close down. He's got that gap. Those are the breakdowns we saw last week in Philly. Now you find yourself in third and a mile. Three-man rush, still pressure, and Wentz is dropped, and it's incomplete. They only rushed three, and they still got to the quarterback as Lawrence was there. It's not a good sign for Washington after the week last week on the offensive line. Yeah, Carson Wentz is getting so much depth here because he's trying to set up a tight end screen off to the left. See how he just keeps retreating in the pocket, retreating in the pocket? It puts so much pressure on his right tackle. Samuel Cosme and obviously Demarcus Lawrence, three sacks last week. He could still get off the edge. We got so many guys who can rush the passer. We spend a lot of time talking about Micah Parsons, but that whole D-line, they can get after it. And so now, after a promising start to the drive, Tress Way will punt it away. Devontae Turpin backpedaling, lets it go over his head. It's a great kick. And Washington will down it right inside the 10. As we listen to Coolio... Tragically passed away this week at the age of 59. Some great tunes back in the day. Hey, fans. Terry's Million Dollars is still up for grabs. Scan your QR code, download Fox Super 6 on your phone now, and play for free. Really, Howie? you got to tell him that. Huh? I love Howie getting involved. Can you, <laughs> can you play if you work for Fox and happen to broadcast games, or is that just for... Non-Fox people. I think I, I think we can jump in. Just um, maybe I'll Terry. Take some of Terry's money. He's got a lot of money. Maybe Terry could help us. We, all, we know his. We saw pictures of his ranch. Now, <laughs> that's a beautiful place. Second drive for the Cowboys. Up three nothing on the Commanders. And they're going to start with a run to Elliott to sneak through for five. So we're talking about Cooper Rush. What about Dak Prescott? EA. Well, I actually had a chance to speak with Dak Prescott, guys, during pregame, and there's the right thumb that everybody in Dallas has been talking about. You know, Dak Prescott telling me this week, there's still some swelling. Mike McCarthy talking about it, and as you can see, there is swelling. Dak saying to me, I'm just simply working on gripping the ball right now. There is absolutely no timeline for me. Mike McCarthy said, if you know anything about Dak, we're trying to just hold him back, and as Dak admitted to me, I've been pushing it a little too much. they got to get the swelling down, guys. Uh, that's great stuff, EA because obviously everyone's wondering. Good cutback by Elliott, and then gets hit a few times. Cole Holcomb has made a couple nice plays on the tackle. Well, it's interesting, all right? We did a game last year, and Prescott was dealing with a calf injury. He came back. You know, he's tough. He comes back early. The offense and he did not look good. They got blown out by Denver. Does it help that Cooper Rush is playing well and that you've won a couple games that you could be, okay, just try to take an extra week or two? Absolutely. If the, if the last two weeks, if they, if they went 0-2 and, and they really find themselves up against it, and you're a lot more desperate. Desperation causes you to make more emotional decisions. Maybe they rush Dak back. As long as Cooper Rush plays well, they're in no hurry. Third down here. Pressure coming. Rush is tripped up and sacked. 
Had time to throw initially, but Jonathan Allen came home for the sack for Washington. Yeah, Jonathan Allen, he's one of the guys inside. You're going to see him here. He's lined up in the D tackle. They got these guys in the A gaps are going to bail. It puts him one on one there. That's just a nice job winning on the edge. Cooper Rush just can't quite step up in the pocket enough. Washington needs those two inside guys. They got three first round picks along this defensive line. That's the strength of this roster, the strength of their, strength of their defense. They need more plays like that out of Jonathan Allen. Brian Anger, Pro Bowl punter a year ago. Dax Milne back, waiting, and he gets hit immediately. Boy, that's a gutsy catch as Goodwin was charging hard to make the tackle with Joseph. But pretty good field position for Washington. Yikes. It's a like to be a punt returner. Dax Milne, tough. Olivia Venture, come seek. Well, Carson Wentz has been traded twice in the last two years. Philadelphia sent to Indianapolis to pair up again with Frank Reich. And then traded here to Washington, taking on a big salary. But these commanders looking for a franchise quarterback really haven't had stability since Kirk Cousins left. Obviously, Alex Smith was playing well, and then he got hurt. So they're hoping that Wentz could be the guy as the commander's down 3 nothing here in the first. And Wentz will hand it off to Gibson, running on the left side out across the 40 to the 42. Well, a couple brothers playing in this game. Nick Morton, the third center in four weeks for Washington. His brother, you know him probably pretty well, Zach Morton, who is an all-pro guard for the Cowboys. So this is a Washington debut for Nick. He's been around, though. He's was a four-year starter for the Raiders. But Chase Roulier got hurt, and then Wes Schweitzer's out with a concussion. So, Nick, here you go against the best pass rush in the league. <laughs> it's how it always works in the NFL. I'll tell you what, there's no, there's no easy days. Run it again. Stutter move. Penalty flies. First down and more, but there's a flag, and this may be coming back. Sure looks like it will be. Yeah, I think in traditional fashion, the second you talk about a guy. Hold it. Offense number 60. Yeah. Why does that happen every yeah, time? I, had a, I mean, yeah. every time. It I never saw failed. it live. We were talking about him. And poor Nick Martin. We just highlighted him. And he, he grabbed him. You'll see him here. Grabbing Bohan, Bohana. He just grabbed him. He couldn't quite get his head across the other side. That just seems always to be the happen, right? The announcer curse. Try to give a guy a little love and talk him up. And unfortunately, things happen. Fine, I won't talk about anyone on this play. <laughs> Second and long. McKissick in the backfield now, and he runs into a wall. Tristan Hill said, uh-uh, with a big stop and a third and long coming up in our first game break of the day. We check in with Carissa Thompson. Thank you so much, Kevin. Giants trailing 3 nothing to the 2-1 and one Bears. Daniel Jones says, I'll just keep this one myself. 21-yard score. It's the Giants' first touchdown in the first half this season. Off to a hot start. They're up 7-3 over the Bears. Kevin? Yeah, Giants play well against the Cowboys. Cowboys took it away from them. And the NFC East, which everyone thought is going to be so dreadful, is looking decent to start the year. Of course, Philly is undefeated, taking on Jacksonville today. Third and long. Blitz coming. Wentz has time. Going deep for it all, and it's incomplete. Donovan Wilson played it extremely well. McLaurin, the intended receiver. Yeah, he gets nice protection. You're going to see Dallas, they use Lawrence and Micah Parsons. That puts a ton of stress on an offensive line, but the offensive line holds up really well. Third and really long, just trying to take a shot to McLaurin down the field. But now we've seen one thing, Scotty Turner, the offensive coordinator in Washington said, we cannot take negative plays, penalties, sacks, tackles for loss. We've seen now penalties put them behind the sticks. Their first two drives, that's just not a great recipe that plays right into the hands of this Dallas defense. And so another punt. Tress Way. Spiraling left-footed kick. Turpin bobbles, recovers. And now it's going to go way back, and that's a mistake. Derek Eichler, or Derek Forrest, I should say, making the tackle. And Dallas will take over. 
But Carson Wentz wanted a penalty flag. There was none. Just good coverage. Tried to get it to McLaurin. Dallas football in their lead. Start, although the Eagles are losing 14 and nothing to Doug Peterson's Jacksonville team today. Dallas obviously 2-1. Giants are 2-1 and playing well and winning today. And now it's the Cowboys with their third possession. Up 3-0 on Washington here late in the first quarter. With Rush back to pass over the middle. CeeDee Lamb in stride and a big gain out across to 35. Perfect throw from Cooper Rush. And Lamb has 23. Great, great play design here. You're going to see they're going to formation it that Jamin Davis with the motion. The linebacker 52 has to take CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb has a three-way go. He can break in, he can break out, or he can sit. This is tough duty for any linebacker. Jamin Davis is a young player, great athlete, but... There's not many backers that are going to go one-on-one -on -one with CeeDee Lamb. On the fake. Rush has time. Lamb's open again. First down and more into Washington territory. Easy pitch and catch to CeeDee Lamb. He had Jamin Davis on him again. And he, another big gain. He's got 16. Yeah, but take a look here. Watch Jamin Davis. He's going to rush up to try to influence. But then he's not a pressure guy. He's trying to go up and influence the the pass protection and now by the time he drops back that's his zone I don't know if he got fooled on the little token run action or if that's just part of the pressure trying to get in and get some attention but either way he voided the entire side of the field he's responsible for they bring on Matt Forniak as a fullback Jason Peters is in a left guard this series and Rush has all day floating one Lamb again first down one more time this connection is working down to the 31, and it's 17 more for C.D. Lamb. Sometimes the art of route running is just run where they're not. It's sometimes not real complicated. If you're open, stay open. It's exactly what C.D. Lamb has been doing. We asked Cooper Rush. We said, you know, at any point last week, he had a couple drops. You know, what did you tell him? Because I didn't tell him anything. I said, I'm going to keep throwing you the ball. You're our best receiver. But I'll tell you what, he has really stepped up and come along early in this season. Pollard cuts back, nothing there. So it's interesting. The Cowboys had Connor McGovern back, the starting left guard. Jason Peters, who we saw last week come in and have some pancake blocks in there this series. And Matt Forniak, who started two games, is in at fullback. They're using every guard imaginable. They're using them all. And, and you mentioned Jason Peters. What a cool story, right? Tyron Smith, the, the longtime left tackle, he gets hurt in training camp. A lot of questions. Well, now Tyler Smith, the rookie, they bump him to left tackle. They bring in Jason Peters. He can play anywhere. He's made quite the impact off the field in the locker room on this Dallas Cowboys team. Might be the final play of the first. Cooper Rush stands in little high. He had Noah Brown open that time. It'll be a second down and 12 with 12 seconds to go in the first quarter. Got a kick out of it. We talked to Mike McCarthy, and, and, and you actually asked him, you know, what has Jason Peters' presence been, felt? You know, he hasn't played a ton, got some snaps here and there. He goes, it's funny, Tyler Smith, we're trying to bring him along as a young rookie. Things that we've been telling him all year, all of a sudden Jason Peters comes in and he's like, it's the gospel, right? It's, oh my God. It, you know, the coaches are like, yeah, well, we've been saying the same thing, but sometimes guys like Jason Peters, when they say it, it just means a little more. Well, he, he's probably going to the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Carries a little weight. Absolutely. Third down and 12. Cooper Rush, pressure, escapes. Will he run it? He's going to try it and he's going to come up short. Benjamin St. Juice came up from the cornerback spot and made the tackle. And that'll take us to the end of the first quarter with a fourth down decision looming for Dallas on the move. They've got an early 3-0 lead over Washington. At Panera, the feast begins before. It's in a fight for the crown. The NLDS, October 11th on Fox and FS1. Welcome back to Arlington, Texas. We start the second quarter with the Cowboys up 3-0 on the Commanders. And Dallas with a fourth and sixth. Looks like they'll try another Brett Maher field goal. Hit one from 53 earlier. This one will be from 45 yards out after a nice drive. We'll call it the CD Lamb drive. He had three catches for 56 yards on the drive. And 
Maher's got it. Well, he's got that nice draw going. You would love that on the golf course today. <laughs> Six nothing Dallas, and we'll be right back after this message from State Farm. Hey, Jake from State Farm. I want that personal price plan. So how's this for personal? I draw mustaches on players' faces when they're asleep. Hmm. Coach Reed, you don't need to get that personal to get the State Farm personal price plan. It helps you create an affordable price just for you. Oh, Coach, it happened again. I'm going to get to the bottom of this. Call or click to get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. So C.D. Lamb, you know, continuing where he left off in that second half against the Giants. Greg talked about it. He had three drops career high in that game. And, yeah, Cooper Rush said, I didn't need any convincing. I was just going to keep throwing it to him. And they, they've got a nice little symmetry going, a nice connection, 56 yards on that drive. And give Washington some credit, too, though, Greg, because Dallas moved the ball down the field a couple times, but they held up and held them to two field goals. Absolutely. And it's not an easy thing to do, right? One of Ron Rivera's longtime philosophies is he wants to play great red zone defense. He wants to play great third down defense. He wants to be good at the situations, the raw yardage, the moving the ball between the 40s. It's not really a huge priority for him. So early in this game, both times it looked like Dallas had something going. Washington's done a nice job defensively holding the field goals. So here's the good news for Washington. They've had some awful first halves where they're getting blown out at halftime. So they're obviously in this game. But at some point, they've got to show something offensively, right? They do. And I, and I think this, this model that they're trying to follow today of, of run the ball and, and get ahead early, yeah. we've seen it just puts them in a position where there's a very small margin for error, right? One penalty we've seen now on both yep. drives stop them. A tackle for loss, some sort of negative plays. That's exactly what Dallas thrives on. So they've got to find a way to cautiously open it up a little bit and try to get some more chunk plays. Got a new right guard. Sadiq Charles is in for Trey Turner at right guard. Don't know if that's substitution just for play or an injury. We'll find out. But a change on the O-line. Is Wentz going to throw it out? Just get it out to Flat and Gibson. Who's shaking and baking and not much there. Well, Again, you heard Tom Rinaldi talk about the start of the game, just getting out of the gate quicker. Defensively, they're hanging in, but they just cannot get anything going on offense. Scott Turner trying to figure out what the right buttons are to push. That's our offensive coordinator. Run it again. Gibson, nice stretch to the left side. He's got a first down. Well, Antonio Gibson's had a couple nice runs just to get some chunks here. Let's see if they can continue it. He has nice job there off the left side. That offensive line got some nice blocking on the perimeter from his receivers. Those are the first and second down runs that they need. And again, it sounds easy to say, right? We, of course, we want to convert first downs early. We want to stay ahead of the chains. But we've seen what happens when Dallas puts you into long to go situations. That pass rush, Dan Quinn's ability to generate pressure. Success on the ground early is critical. Draw, Jonathan Williams in the game. Not much there. Demarcus Lawrence, nice tackle. Coming off a three sack game over the Giants. Dan Quinn, what a job he's done. Obviously long term coach, head coach with the Falcons and now coming over here and just really in his second year with this Dallas defense, I, I think people may forget. Well, Cowboys fans don't. This was a historically bad defense before he got here. Yeah, the turnaround last year in his first year here has been remarkable. I mean, he made this not just a, an average defense to just hold their own to go along with one of the better offenses last year, but this this defense was game changing for them with the takeaways, the ability to rush the passer. Again, left side, big hole for Williams, who's into Dallas territory. They're finding success running to the left side behind Charles Leno. He's got 18 more yards on the ground. Yeah, take a look here at the two tight ends. You're going to see John Bates. He's the one on the ball. Watch the job he and Logan Thomas do here on the edge. Logan Thomas takes his guy right to the ground. Bates comes up and finds Diggs. That gets, that gets the back the edge. That's a nice job there. Jonathan Williams able to get there to the boundary and turn it up. If you have tight ends who can block, I'm, I'm biased here, KB. I wasn't always the best blocker, but if you have tight ends who can block, if you want to be committed to the run game, it goes a long way. Zone read. Wentz is in trouble. Gets away from Parsons. Running for his life now. He's got to throw it away. 
And we'll see if he got it away. That didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. That's the problem. What is the call on the field? Yeah, it's flag. It's going to be intentional grounding. Well, right on cue, you talk about... Intentional grounding, offense number 11. Although he's outside the pocket, the ball did not make it back to the line of scrimmage. The ball be placed at the spot of the foul, lost it down, second down. Yeah, he's got to get rid of that ball sooner, but the breakdown, we, we have a pattern going here today. We just talked about how good of a job on the previous play Bates and Logan Thomas did, the two tight ends. Well, in that time, they were both matched up off to the right side on Micah Parsons, and he got through pretty quick, but you'd like to see Carson Wentz just understand, I'm on the perimeter, I got nobody in front of me, help me out. That ball's got to be in the first row of the, of the bleachers. He just, he has a tendency of trying to stretch the play to the very last second, and sometimes magic can happen, but oftentimes it's just unnecessary risk. Throw that ball out of bounds before that guy can gain on you, but again, they find themselves now due to a penalty in second and 20. Yeah, you're right. Instead of an incomplete second and 10, second and 22 after a loss of 12. It's happened every drive. They started off well and had a penalty or a sack or a big miscue. Trying to set up a screen here to Gibson. Look out. Here comes Micah Parsons. And Gibson did a nice job to get some yards. Parsons is so fast. Number 11 on Dallas. <laughs> you, he's talented. He's going watch the effort. He jumps he goes around the cut block. He sees the screen. Now watch him turn. They call this retrace. He just runs that original path, and he ends up making the tackle. <laughs> you can't coach effort, right? I mean, he's talented. He's got all the intangibles. But, man, when you play hard and you're talented, that's why he's so special. Third and 11. Wentz pumps, comes near side, incomplete. It was high to J.D. McKissick. And another promising start to a drive, which is going to end in a punch. Yeah, and that's kind of been the, that's been the, that's been the tale, right, of these last couple weeks, is every time they seem like they're taking a couple steps forward, they take one back. The one positive is the punt team's done a great job. They've forced Dallas to now have to really go the long way offensively. They flipped the field position by getting a few first downs. A good punt here, you pin him inside the 10, put your defense in a good position, but it's the negative plays. We talked about it at the start of the show, it's been the negative plays that have set them back. Tress Way's first two punts have been inside the 20, see if he could go three for three. And he sure will. He's done a really nice job on special teams for the commanders. So Dallas will take over, a couple field goals for them on the board, six nothing first half. There have been three quarterbacks in the Cowboys illustrious history to win their first three starts ever. Great Roger Staubach, Jason Garrett, and Cooper Rush. No one's ever won the first four, so Cooper's trying to put himself all alone in that Cowboys record books. And he's trying to win his first four starts. By the way, the first three is all won with game-winning drives. So he hasn't just won them. He's put his team on his back and driven down the field. And he's also probably making himself a lot of money in the process, too. And the Cowboys will come out here. With 11 33 to go in the first half. Up six now. They go jumbo formation with Zeke Elliott as the back. Matt Farniak, the guard and a fullback. They've used it a few times today. And Elliott has a short game. Meanwhile, you look at the commander side of things, frustration. We've seen the negative plays. Carson Wentz. Now watch this. He's frustrated, but good job by him. Remember, Tom Brady broke a couple tablets a couple weeks ago in our game. They sent a memo out, hey, please be kind to the tablets. So Wentz says, you know what? I'm going to prioritize the water bottle on the monetary scale. They're much cheaper, Greg. <laughs> yeah, it's what? Sometimes you got to learn from no, other people's mind. mistakes <laughs> go, go, go. rather than your own. Second down, four-man rush. Rush going deep, back shoulder incomplete. Heck of an effort. Noah Brown turned around, just couldn't make the catch. And a third down coming up. Yeah, they call these big box fades. He's in, he's the number two receiver, but you end up kind of where a fade would be for the number one guy. He just can't quite get around. It's a good ball. Cooper Rush, you can see a little disappointed there, but I think it's a good ball. 
Well, Brown just can't quite get to it on the back shoulder. Good coverage there by St. Juice, number 25 for Washington, but expect them to come back to that. They, they had that matchup, and it was a pretty good ball. Kalante Turpin in the game in the slot now. Rush pressure. He's in trouble and throws it away, stuck into the ground, but there was a receiver, Ezekiel Elliott, in the area. If you're looking for grounding, there won't be one, but it will be a punch, so Washington's defense does the job. Yeah, they've really answered the bell. I mean, the last, last drive, they kind of let CeeDee Lamb get loose a little bit there for three consecutive catches. But Jack Del Rio, his staff here on defense, they, they came in with a, with a point to prove. You know, they, there's a lot of talk this game about Dallas's defense and Dan Quinn, rightfully so. But Ron Rivera, Jack Del Rio, these are defensive-minded guys. They have a lot of pride, a lot of confidence in their track record. And so far today, they've played well. Milne calls fair catch at the 35, and that's where the Commanders will take over. Trying to get some offense going with Carson Wentz at the helm. Currently 6-0 Cowboys, second quarter. So? Fast, reliable, secure. Back at AT&T Stadium, this place is gorgeous, and if you love art, you'll love what Jean Jones has put on display. She's got a passion for it, and she's good at it. I mean, there's some... It's just an awesome place to come watch a game. And then you see the art from Gene all around here in the stadium. You come check out, display throughout the stadium. Gives it a little character, a little flavor. Right now, the flavor of this game is defense. 6 nothing Cowboys lead. Carson Wentz trying to get this offense going on the ground with Gibson. It hasn't been a problem. That's his fourth carry. He's already got 27 yards. They just have had an epic mistake every single drive that has set them back. Yeah, I think you're going to see a little tempo. I'd like to see them pick their pace up. I think they're going to do it here. Just find some rhythm, find some first downs, convert, stay ahead of the chains, keep Dallas in a personnel group that maybe you you think is favorable. Keep them there. Don't let them sub. Wentz, quick throw this time. Curtis Samuel has his first catch up across the 45 and a first down for Washington. Samuel, the ex-Panther, has been really good. He's got seven catches plus every game. He does, and they can use him as sort of a, a Debo Samuel type wide receiver slash running back. You'll see him today in the backfield. You'll see him today play traditional wide receiver. He can do a lot of things with him. The jet sweeps. On uh, the fake to give Gibson up the middle to midfield. Yeah, Curtis Samuel, they gave him a big contract. Three year, 34 and a half million. But he was hurt all of last year. He had a recurring groin injury. He only played five games, and he was a non factor. So Ron Rivera said. He looks like the old Curtis Samuel this year. Yeah, this looks like the Curtis that I played with when he was young in Carolina. You know, we always used to joke that Curtis, it looked like he had springs in his legs. Even when he was jogging, he just ran different than everyone. Kind of had that track speed, that track, you know, kind of gait. And as you mentioned, the injuries the last couple years have taken their toll. But putting on the film this year, this looks like the Curtis Samuel that I played with back in Carolina that led to that big contract here in Washington. Give, and a big hole, and a seam for McKissick, sprinting ahead, J.D. McKissick dragged down from behind, but not before a big gain. The speed of McKissick leads to 33 yards and a first down. Watch the effect, this, this hide, watch how slow these two backers are, because they send the tight end backside. Look, see how they just hang, they hang. Anthony Barr is just a little bit late getting there, and great job here on the edge. Take a look on the right, look at the job they do on Parsons, Samuel Cosme, really well blocked, good scheme. Now they go hurry up again. They do. They're going to throw it. McLaurin, and oh, that was almost dangerous, and he held on, and he somehow gets down to the 11. That could have been a disaster. But McLaurin, after the bobble, corralled it, and he picks up six. Yep, they're going to stay. They're going to stay in this pace. They think they found some here. Scott Turner, the offensive coordinator, he likes what defense he has him in. He likes the tempo. They should not be holding the ball. There was no sub. Washington's mad. McKissick. Uh, not much. To the 10. It'll be a third down and two. They yeah, saw the, the referee standing over the ball. They traditionally only do that if the offense subs because it gives the defense a chance to also match the substitutions. In that case, Washington didn't sub. Sometimes the referees are unsure and they'll err on the side of holding the ball.
Third and two. Wentz lofting corner of the end zone. Caught for the touchdown. Jahan Dotson. Well, when they traded for Carson Wentz, these are the throws that wowed them. This is why Ron Rivera hitched the future of this team to Carson Wentz. What an unbelievable throw here to Dotson. Watch this route at the top. Watch, he sits him down and just breaks, but he drops this ball right in the bucket. Back pylon throw. Really good route there by the rookie. It's a pretty impressive drive. We talked about how slow starters they've been offensively. It's carried over today through the first quarter and into the second, but that was an impressive drive. Joey Sly, extra point is perfect. So, a little tempo and a little production from this offense in Carson Wentz with a hookup to Dotson, his fourth touchdown of the year. And Washington with a one-point lead. We'll make People at home wondering, did Washington get this playoff? Mike Pereira, what do you say? Well, we couldn't hear Mike, but we talked to Mike during the break, and he said, "Yep, they did get it off." Remember, they always get the you always get the beat, right? The officials look at the play clock, and when it's zero, they look up, and the ball's got to be gone. Try to get Mike back in in another moment. But you talked about it for all the struggles; they've had some negative plays. That was a pretty drive from Carson Wentz, and a great job with the tempo, right? A lot of those plays, Micah Parsons was on the sideline, so very smart of Washington to say, hey, the best player on the field is on the sideline. Let's not give them an opportunity to sub. Let's keep them with the personnel on the field. A little mix of some quick game, a little mix of some run, and obviously capped off with a really nice pass by Carson Wentz. That shows the balance of what this offense can do. It's just a matter now of sustaining it. Well, Ron Rivera has kept this team in this game, and now they've got the lead, and Tom Rinaldi's got an eye on it down on the sidelines. Remember, we talked to him this week, guys, and he told us he understood the frustration after the tough loss to Philadelphia, but that the most important message this week came Monday in a meeting when he showed the team 14 plays from that game, every single one of them positive. He told us, I wanted them to see what we can do and the plays where we did it right, to give them the visual and know these are plays we can and will make. Hard to keep a team together and positive here, even in the early going, and we seem to be seeing it manifest here, guys. Here is Rush on the rollout, firing incomplete. Tried to get it to Dalton Schultz, but is knocked away by the safety Derek Forrest. Nice play. Yeah, to kind of piggyback on what Tom just reported, that it's so true. Obviously, I spent a lot of time with Ron. So often after a tough game, coaches are kind of torn. Do you throw the film in the trash, right? Last week against Philly, they struggled. Do you throw it in the trash and move on? Do you sit there and really harp and pound it into the players? Ron always had a great feel for how to handle coming out of bad situations, getting his team ready to move forward. We've seen that today. Going to give it to Elliott, who scurries up the middle. Out to the 20. Well, you know, we Greg Olson, Ron Rivera, they, they had some pretty good times together, in case you didn't know. Got to a Super Bowl together. You know, it looks like you're listening very intently in this picture, and now you're, you're <laughs> kind of giving it back. Yeah, I, I think we were on the same page there. I think we were all yelling at probably official. Sorry, Mike Pereira. <laughs> I, pr I, I apologize to you and all of your fellow colleagues. Um, but no, all joking aside, Ron, he just has a great pulse of his teams, and it's probably his greatest asset. hear him changing the mic calls third and long blitz is coming picked up initially rush back foot down the middle of the field and short it's intercepted st juice has it he had brown wide open he couldn't get it to him and now there's a penalty too far side of the field benjamin st juice if it stands his first career interception but let's see boy i thought that was a touchdown at first greg he just didn't have enough mustard on the throw yeah, we'll see what they sort out here. Really nice pressure. You heard Cooper Rush move the point. They brought while the quarterback was in the pocket. Illegal contact. Defense. Whoa. Five-yard penalty. Automatic first down. And there's that big penalty. And you're going to see the illegal contact right there in the slot. Yeah, kind of held him up just enough. He ended up getting the pick, but really nice blitz. Design. It wasn't picked up great. Cooper 
Cooper Rush kind of on his back foot, sailed it, but he got away with one there. The penalty obviously negates the pick. Yeah, that's been the story for Washington. They've had a few of those boo-boos today as Elliott with a short game. Mike Pereira chimed in, said, by the way, clearly a penalty. Yeah. He slid into him there. You know, so Mike Pereira says it's a penalty for sure. Ron Rivera. So, you, so if you were on the sideline, you'd be yelling with him? Yeah, I would have been idea? standing right next to him. Whether I saw the play or not, I would have just taken his side and just screamed that it wasn't a penalty. But, yeah, St. Juice just has to keep his feet moving a little bit. He kind of got that right arm around him. Slowed Noah Brown up just enough, even though that ball was very underthrown. On second down, four-man rush. Cooper rush batted down at the line. Deron Payne got his big hands up. And knocked it away as we go down to Aaron. Saw that great shot of Greg Olson back in the day with the Carolina Panthers, kind of giving it to the officials with his former head coach, Ron Rivera. Kevin, I swear we worked that game. I sat up right here, stood up right here on the sidelines and listened to our very own Greg Olson. And I can confirm he always gave it to the officials. I mean, I just remember this guy has three kids the way he was talking to those officials. Gave it to them. Yeah, come on. Mike Pereira finally <laughs> likes me. We finally bonded over a glass of wine in uh, Not California. Anymore. But now Third you're going to have Has it complete. Welcome back, Michael Gallup, for a first down. His first catch since coming back from a torn ACL, and that one's got to feel good for 15. Oh, no question. That first catch, he talked last week. He thought physically he was there. Mentally, a little, you know, kind of hesitation getting back out there. But, man, that allows him to take a deep breath. Floater out to Lamb, who tries to make a cut, but his momentum took him out of bounds. And you know, he's got a short pickup there. You know, so, so often... See McGovern back in at left guard as they continue the rotation. You know, so often everyone focuses on the rehab schedule, right? Talking about Michael Gallup coming back from an ACL. You know, so often it's the, the mental approach, the confidence, getting your feet underneath you is takes far longer than the actual physical recovery. And that's exactly what Michael Gallup said. A lot of people thought he was going to play last week against New York, but still felt he needed some more practice time. And getting his first catch, I know, will go a long way to settling those nerves. Elliott right side, barreling forward, strong run, Elliott, he's got a big gainer, he's going to pick up six, we've had another game break with Carissa Thompson. Thanks Kevin, Giants up 7-6, Daniel Jones, going to keep this one himself, eight yard score, his second career game with multiple rushing touchdowns, Giants leading this one 14-6, to I'm sitting next to Pereira, Greg, and he says you're still good with him. For now, as the <laughs> Cowboys go quick, and Elliott is starting to uh, get hot. He's got a first down. Yeah, I always wonder why teams, you know, we've seen now both teams, Washington and Dallas, go to this up-tempo style of offense. And it just has an ability to really settle teams down. If you feel like you're struggling, you feel like you're not finding your rhythm, there's something about it. Kellen Moore, the offensive coordinator for these Cowboys, turning up the rhythm here. 3.30 to go in the half. Pollard in the game at tailback now. Pollard has it. Stutter step up the middle and a good run inside the 30. Now Chase Young, Washington, waiting to have him back. He's eligible to return next week. Not sure if that's going to be the case. He tore his ACL last year, too, week 10. And obviously such a force, his rookie year, defensive rookie of the year. Commanders miss him. Yeah, we mentioned earlier they got three first-round picks up front. Well, they really got four when he comes back. So, I mean, that's... That's the strength, and I know they're chomping at the bit to get him back out there. He's their tone setter. He's their game changer. He's their Micah Parsons. Tenth play of the drive. It's Pollard dancing around, looking for a seam down to the 26. Well, Chase Young had a little conversation with Tom Rinaldi earlier. Tom, I saw you. What did he say? Yeah, I had a chance to catch up with Chase, who we first met back at Ohio State. Said all the perspective that he's gained here from not being out there, all that he's learned. First serious injury, guys, at any level in his career. Can't wait to get back out there. But he's learned patience and a different way, a different way to look at the game. We could be talking about him the way we talk about Micah if he's out there. And while Rush is going to sneak it for a first down. And that'll take us down to the two-minute warning. So on third and short, Cooper Rush with the sneak. We've hit the two-minute warning. Washington up one. Cowboys driving. 
can identify men in a box. Ives. Thanks, guys. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show, we'll have the highlights and scores from around the league, including the Eagles looking to remain the league's only undefeated team. That's all coming up when we see you at the half. Very looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Eagles in Jacksonville tied at 14. It's a good game. Doug Peterson back in Philly. And Kellen Moore has his offense just playing well. You know, this is two minutes left. Each team with three timeouts. Interesting here. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of game management here. I think if you're Dallas, you know Washington gets the ball coming out of halftime to make them you stay on the ground here maybe make the clock run force them to make a decision if they want to use their timeouts on defense work the clock rush protected over the middle has a completion it's brown inside the 15 and noah brown's got a first down that's his first catch today yeah, Noah Brown, I mean, last week he's their number two with the addition of Michael Gallup back. They got themselves three really good wide receivers. Of course, CeeDee Lamb is the key, clear number one. Michael Gallup still working his way back from injury. And Noah Brown, that gives them three really good weapons to go along with Dalton Schultz back today. It's a good skill group. I think they just jumped. Yep. They'll be moving back. Start. Offense number 63. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's on the center, Tyler Biotish. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to make a point. Not exactly sure if he jumped or not. You heard Cooper Rush saying, kill, 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 kill. I don't know if that if he twitched the ball or something, but however, the defense has declined a 10-second runoff. The clock will start on the snap. So it's interesting. They, they they could have taken a 10 second runoff there, talking with Mike Pereira, but the defense declined it. For your point, they'd like to get the ball back here. Absolutely, and they don't have to take a timeout as a result. So they can stop the clock by declining the penalty, keep the 10 seconds, and still have three timeouts. That makes it first and 15. Set up a draw. Wide open up the middle. Pollard inside the 10 and turning forward where he's going to be stopped there. Down to the nine. And now. See if Washington calls a timeout, they do. Well, you could start Saturday strong with Big Noon Saturday as number four Michigan taking their show on the road to Indiana. I'll start the Big Noon kickoff live in Bloomington, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then Michigan, Indiana at noon on Fox. So Washington, their first timeout of the half. And a second down and six for Dallas. The Commanders is a 7 6 lead. Carson Wentz touchdown pass, 10 yards to Jahan Dotson. Rookie's got four of them already this year. Rush. Near side, incomplete. Pollard, the intended receiver. He was well covered, though, by Jamin Davis, and now a third down, and the clock stops at 110. We saw earlier CeeDee Lamb on one of those option routes in the slot get Jamin Davis, but what a nice job here by Jamin Davis. The difference is versus the one we saw earlier, he stayed inside. He forced Pollard to break out, use the sideline as his friend. Much better job there matching that choice route to set up this third down. And remember, stop the clock. That incomplete. It's a 15th play of this drive. Rush looking, throwing, end zone. It's caught by Gallup. Touchdown, Dallas. Well, we mentioned how good that first catch felt on the little curl earlier in this drive, but I'll tell you what, that touchdown feels even better for Michael Gallup and his return. This is just scam scramble drill. He sees Cooper Rush break the pocket, and he's just going to work with his quarterback along the back end of the end zone, runs away from Cole Holcomb, the linebacker. Really impressive there by Cooper Rush, keeping that play alive. Mike McCarthy loves it. Got to love that for Michael Gallup in his return from pretty significant injury. Good Eight. for him. 15-play drive. Michael Gallup back from the ACL. 
And the extra point is blocked, and it's sitting out there. It's going to be returned for a two. Washington is going to be taken down. Oh, he's got to he's got to pitch the ball. He's got to stay up. Keep gonna, the ball alive. The no lose situation. F.A. Obata got the hand on it. Instead, it's just a blocked point <laughs> after. Still, it's Dallas in the lead. On an Earth. live on your mobile phone with NFL Plus. You're going to see F.A. Obata. He's lined up right here in the A gap or in the C gap. I'm sorry. He comes right through and he makes a great block. But now watch. His teammates are calling for him to pitch the ball. You want to keep this play alive. You see 34 Christian Holmes saying, pitch me the ball, keep it alive. He was so excited about the block. I don't know if he realized that I he could have returned it for a two-point conversion. I don't I think don't, he realized that. Like, and that would have made it a field goal game. It's a big play. Look, I don't know that they would have gone all the way down, but they certainly had an avenue. Anyway, nice play to block Great it. Great play. No question about it. And now Washington has a minute four and two timeouts left. So they've got a decent amount of time here to at least get a field goal range. Ironically, their kicker, who's got a big booming leg, Joey Sly, has not attempted a field goal yet in four weeks, which is almost hard to believe. That is hard to believe. He does have a big leg, though. He's one of those Carolina guys that have come up here now to Washington with Coach Rivera. Joey's got a big leg. He can hit it. I'll tell you what, he's also incredibly strong. He's got you the go biggest biceps biggest of any biceps field goal kicker in history. In history. You should see him in the weight room. The guy's incredible. All right. 104 in the half. 12-7 Cowboys. Here's Wentz. They're going to run it to McKissick. That was an interesting call. That's not going to get much. Israel Mukwamu read it well. And they're letting the clock run down. I don't get this. Yeah, you, you're kind of going like a muddle huddle here where they're not huddling, but they're not really playing with a lot of pace. I think their concern is, based on how this down goes, they definitely don't want to give Dallas the ball back before half. Just letting the whole thing wind down. You know, remember, Dallas still has all three timeouts. Wentz. Throws coming near side and it's going to be out of bounds to Logan Thomas, who's got his first catch today. It'll be a third down and two with 22 seconds left in the half. Yeah, kind of a conservative approach there. I think that the three timeouts by Dallas is what concerned Washington. If you throw incomplete on first or second down, you stop the clock, you give him an extra chance. Maybe feel like the way Dallas's offense just had that long drive. You don't want to put your defense right back out there after a 15 play scoring drive kind of going to halftime here limit the downside it's gonna run it and gonna pick up a first down see if they call a timeout or not and they will with 17 seconds to go so they've got one timeout left 17 seconds ago and a long way to go I mean realistically sly you know, you get to the 42, you get a chance. His career long is 56. He's attempted crazy distances because of his leg. He hasn't hit on any past 56. Yeah, we were we were in uh, London a couple years ago. I think it was 2019, and it was one of those weird free kick games where we, we fair caught a punt yes. before halftime against Tampa at the Tottenham Stadium, and he actually attempted, like, I think it was like a 65 or 66-yard free kick. The stands went crazy. They thought they were at a soccer match. He missed it, but he's got a huge leg, as you said. Just give him a chance. Realistically, you need 23 yards or so. One timeout left can go anywhere. Wentz decides to go for it all. Going deep. It is intercepted Trayvon Diggs. Guess who? His second of the year. The guy who led the league with 11 last year has number two. Yeah, he plays defensive back like he's a wide receiver. He's got the best ball skills of any secondary player in the entire league. That ball looked like he was running under a fade. If the ball's close to him, chances are he's going to come down with it. One of the premier ball hawking secondary players in the entire league. Last year in this matchup, first play of the game, Washington tried to do a similar kind of go route down the sideline. It ended the exact same way, first play from scrimmage. Trayvon Diggs, he makes you think twice if you want to go over there and, and, and attack him because if he gets his hands near it, he's going to come down with it. Cowboys have all three timeouts. 
if they want to get crazy here but they won't just going to hand it off to Elliot and happy to take their lead into the locker room and they'll let it run on out time to take a look at our top performers brought to you by Monarch Tuesdays on Fox as you look at this one why don't we look at the quarterbacks Wentz with a touchdown Rush with a touchdown and CeeDee Lamb is having a nice first half four catches 59 yards at the break it's the Cowboys 12 the Commanders 7 Cooper Rush finding Michael Gallup for the lead halftime show now in LA Verizon halftime Kurt Menefee all yours my friend Did it happen this broadcast is copyrighted by NFL Productions for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of NFL Productions is prohibited. We're well, in trouble and he is buried. What an unbelievable throw here to Dotson. Touchdown, Dallas. You gotta love that for Michael Gallup. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive as we get set for the third quarter. 12 7 Cowboys. Good game to this point. And for Washington, look, they're they're just happy to be in the game because the first half of the last couple weeks have been so dreadful. They've run the ball, which they told us they would. Cowboys have had some nice drives. They converted on the touchdown on their last drive to Gallup, but the defense for Washington has held up inside the red zone or just outside the red zone, held the long field goals. You see Gallup back from an ACL. And so it's been fun so far. Two and one Cowboys, one and two Commanders. Washington won the coin toss originally and deferred, so they will get it to start this third quarter as we go down to Tom Rinaldi. Well, Greg, talking to Ron Rivera, he made it clear that what they need to do offensively is use that pace. That's where they found some success and continue to find ways to protect their quarterback Carson Wentz. He feels like there are some things open downfield, but he needs time to operate. Defensively, he was pleased with everything except the ability for C.D. Lamb repeatedly to get open across the middle and to exploit matchups against linebackers. Rivera pretty energized by coming out here at the second half, but he knows a long way to go, and he said, we have to execute better, guys. Yeah, they've done some good things, no doubt about that. Trying to get the run game continue to go. That is going to go backwards. Micah Parsons just blew that play up. And on the run game, look, we were told all week by the Washington staff, they got to run the ball more to stay in this game. Well, obviously, if you look at this graphic, first three games, 100 yards today, more than that in the first half. Yeah, they've executed the game plan that they were that they talked about all week. I think early on, the first couple possessions, the negative plays, the turnovers, getting behind the chains, of course, they've got to eliminate that. But so far, I think if you ask Ron and, and Scott Turner, the offensive coordinator, you're within one score at half, considering how poor the first halves have been to start this season. I think they take it. Carson Wentz only has 8 of 13 for 50 yards, but does have a touchdown pass. On second down. Three-man rush incomplete. That time Micah Parsons in coverage. I mean, what else can he do at this point? It's incredible. I was watching the formation kind of unfold, and I said, all right, they got Micah Parsons walked out over Terry McLaurin. Well, Carson Wentz saw it too, but unfortunately... Micah Parsons is right in his hip pocket. I mean, the guy is incredible. And probably on this next snap, he's going to line up at defensive end and rush the passer. He's kind of jawing back and forth here on the near sideline with Chase Young. You can see him. He goes from defending their best receiver in the slot to now lining up down here to rush the passer. The guy's, he's special. Four-man rush. Parsons blocked up. Wentz has time. Delivers a strike for a first down. And a good catch by Curtis Samuel, who bobbled initially but hauled it in to move the chains. Yeah, nice job here by Curtis. They call this a little spin route. He's going to show like he's running a post, and then he's going to put the brakes on. Have the, I think, think they got away with one here. Early on, you saw the Dallas players kind of pointing. Sadiq Charles, the right guard, kind of flinched. You mentioned he's in there for Trey Turner since the first half. They got away with one there, but a nice nice conversion on third down. They'll run it to McKissick, who runs into a wall. We go downstairs to Aaron. Well, that wall is exactly what head coach Mike McCarthy wants to see. He told me coming out of the half, 
point blank, we got to stop the run. They've have over 100 yards in the first half. We got to let this quarterback Carson Wentz play a little. And Greg, you wanted to know for Dallas's offense, they've had success with the up tempo. Are we going to see it in the second half? He said, we're going to be selective, but count on it. I like it. You know, it sounded like he was going to be coy with the EA, and they said, oh, you know what? Yeah, count on it. It's worked for both teams. Absolutely. Second and nine, McKissick, right side. He's in deep trouble, and he is slammed down. Neville Gallimore has already got a sack in this game, a big tackle for a loss, and a third and long. Yeah, another one of these third downs. They're going to find themselves behind the sticks. Nice change of pace. It's typically a four down front. They move Micah Parsons around. Dan Quinn, the defensive coordinator in that time, he thought it was a little more of a run emphasis on these early downs. Put five big guys across the board, force, force all the offensive linemen into one on one blocks. And Gallimore makes the nice tackle for loss. They mentioned moving Micah Parsons around. Look where he is here, KB. He's lined up over the center. See what kind of stunt they have. Right up the middle. He's unblocked. And that is going to be going nowhere. Dotson caught it. Donovan Wilson, the safety, was all over it. And this Dallas defense with a statement on the opening drive. Yeah, I mean, rightfully so. We spend a lot of time talking about Micah Parsons. But Donovan Wilson, when we asked Dan Quinn, you know, who's the tone setter? Who's the guy? He says Donovan Wilson is by far our most physical tackler. He's our tone setter. He's our edge. He's a versatile player. He can play in the box. He can play deep safety. Just a talented group defensively here in Dallas. Turpin calls fair catch at the 15. Cowboys football, first possession of the third quarter for them. 12-7 their lead here in Arlington. This game is sponsored by T-Mobile. More 5G bars in more places. Now join Fox Corporation in donating to support those affected by the devastation of Hurricane Ian. The NFL family has come together to support recovery efforts in Florida. Visit NFL.com slash auction. Bid on authentic and game-worn items. Support the American Red Cross's Hurricane Ian relief efforts. Visit RedCross.org slash NFL or text the word Ian to 90999. Make a $10 donation and help. Just devastating effects. Looking at those pictures and videos. Has great play outside. Pollard had nowhere to go. William Jackson, the cornerback, came up to make a hit. It's a really nice play. You're going to see they pulled the tackle steal, and he's trying to kick him out. But William Jackson doesn't give him a chance. Kind of comes underneath the block, gets skinny. Now he forces Dallas behind the chains in a second long situation with really nice run support from the corner spot. Now Jackson was out last week with a back injury back in there today. Yeah, he's getting a mic check. He's getting a man check here. This is Jamin Davis. Rush looking that way. Pressure throwing it deep for Pollard. There's a flag and it is picked off, I believe, but there's a penalty flag. Was he inbounds? Cameron Curl. Looks like it, but there's a penalty. I think Davis might have gotten Pollard on the way out of that route. Let's see. There's a lot to unpack. Defense number 25. Five yard penalty. First down. Well, it wasn't on Davis, it was on St. Juice. But I wonder if, let's see. I think it was Davis. Let's find out. Yeah, I think they called the wrong guy. St. Juice got it called on him. I think it was Jackson in the slot on Michael Gallup. So he, when he puts the back outside wide and the linebacker goes with him, that's his man tell. He went to that matchup on the outside, but now for the second time, a pick has been negated by a penalty. Yeah. Although, nice play. Deron Payne bursts through the line. He's made a couple of nice plays. So, so think about that. You're right. Two interceptions negated from penalty. They also have the blow up on first down. So instead of, you know, second and long, you, you give them a freebie. It's Washington's had a bunch of those today. This, though, not one. This was a great play. And that's a really good player blocking back. I mean, Zach Martin's one of the premier guards in the entire league. Deron Payne, Jonathan Allen. We haven't called Montez Sweat's name on the outside. Three first rounders. They've put a lot of investment to that D-line. Some pressure on Rush. Pressured and just throws it at the feet of Pollard. Incomplete. Washington getting some pressure on this possession here. Yeah, really nice line game there. They were trying to set up a screen to Pollard. 
but the twist inside kind of got Cooper Rush off his spot and just kind of dirted it at the feet of his back. A nice job here by Washington. This has been a good stand. Again, take the penalty away, and they've, they've kind of asserted themselves here to start the second half. Have to get to the 24 on third down pressure again, and that's incomplete. Schultz, the tight end. A lot of pressure that time from Washington. Montez Sweat got there, and the Cowboys will punt. Yeah, again, they're trying to set up another screen at the, at the top. You're going to see they try to set up a, a tight end screen. Montez Sweat gets pressured. James Smith-Williams, look at the job he does. He kind of sees Dalton Schultz. You don't look like you're trying to block me. You're up to something. I'm just going to stay home. Cooper Rush has nowhere again. Back-to-back -back screens. He's been forced to just throw at the feet of his intended target. Nice job there by Washington. They got a shot here to get some good field position. Anger. High, booming punt. Milne all the way back to the 32. Breaks a tackle and works his way out up near the 39. But a great kick, 57 yards on the punt. Washington D with a nice little hold. Got a five-point deficit with their football here in the third. In Dallas leading Washington. Commander's defense with a good series, though, even after the penalty negated an interception, which hurt. But they made a couple great plays, got some pressure on Cooper Rush, and now they get the ball back down by five. Start on their own 39-yard line here. Carson Wentz, 10 of 16 for just 66 yards. Touchdown and an interception. On the fake. Looking to get it to the tight end. That is not going to go anywhere. Thomas made the catch, but hit immediately by Malik Hooker. Well, today's next-gen stats powered by AWS. Carson Wentz mentioned his touchdown. It went to Jahan Dotson. But check this out. I mean, the catch probability, 28%. Greg, you talked about what a good throw it was. It's the second touchdown he's had. The probability of making that catch under 30% this year. So he's... He makes the tough catches. That's the bottom line. Absolutely. They make the hard throws. They make the hard catches. Something they need to do the rest of not only today, but the rest of the year. Make the easy plays, right? Get rid yes. of the penalties. Take what's there. That's kind of been Carson Wentz's Achilles heel this year. Is he wants every play to be the spectacular one. But he's definitely capable of making them. Pressure. Wentz fires back. Foot! And Diggs almost got another one. There's a penalty back by the quarterback, too. Why is it that every bullet's in the air? It seems like Trayvon Diggs has a hand on it. It's, <laughs> it's he's, amazing. He's incredible. I mean, I, I thought he came up with that. He just couldn't quite get his hands underneath it. But again, Carson Wentz has such confidence in his arm strength. He thinks he can make those throws. Holding. Offense number 77. 10-yard penalty. Replay second down. That's on Sadiq Charles. Yeah, you're going to see he gets that right hand up underneath. Yeah, he's trying to run him wide. They teach offensive linemen, once you get edged, try to run your guy deep, let the quarterback step up, and that time he just gets that right hand around his collar. Dante Fowler kind of beat him there on the edge. But how many times have we seen this? The aggressive style of Dallas forcing these penalties. Washington has found themselves multiple times today in second and plus 20. Yeah, Charles has played almost the whole game. Trey Turner, from what we know, got sat down early, and there's another penalty. Going to move it back. Yeah, Tom told us in the first half the Turner was okay. False start, offense, number 76, five-yard penalty, second down. Well, Washington only had 12 penalties on the year coming in. They've got eight today. It's, it has been a problem. That's on Cosme, the right tackle. By the way, one other injury note. Well, that one was not injury-related, but for Dallas, Deron Bland, the rookie, playing his first defensive snaps today. Jordan Lewis went out with a groin injury. And he was questionable return in the first half. He's their nickel back. They're told he's out for the game. So Bland playing a decent amount and now will play a lot in the nickel package. Wentz. Oh my goodness. Nearly taking the handoff was Dante Fowler. 
Yeah, Dante Fowler, he comes off the offense's right side, unblocked. You mentioned Sadiq Charles in there, Samuel Cosme, the right guard and the right tackle. They both step down. We've got a fan out there. The right tackle is responsible for Dante Fowler. There was a mix-up in the assignment. Third and forever. Blitz coming. Wentz rolling in trouble. Hit as he throws. Incomplete. Lawrence with big time pressure. Yeah, there's just nowhere to go when Dan Quinn has you in these positions. Just not a lot of options. You know, his eyes, he came out looking right. It looks like McLaurin's open. There's a safety over the top. Hooker, he's kind of not as open as he looks from that camera angle. There's just nowhere to go when you find yourself in second and 20, second and 20, third and 20, third and 25. Trying to sort out the game clock there. It's just too many times these drives, they find themselves in second and plus 20, third and plus 20. They're just not built for that. Not many teams are built when you're playing the front like the Cowboys have. So on fourth and 27, Tress Way to punt. And it goes out of bounds. We get a penalty here back around the kicker. Well, it's interesting. I mean, it's fourth and 27. If it is running into the kicker, it's only a five yard penalty. But roughing, that's a little There's different no ball game. There's no foul for running into the kicker. Time out. Don't forget all I just said. <laughs> so, Dallas defense forcing Washington to go backwards. Cowboys making it tough on Carson Wentz. In the road against Indiana. Oh! All part of Big Noon Saturday on Fox. 12-7 Cowboys here in the third quarter, and welcome to the broadcast booth. We were just talking. You feel like this is a pretty big part of the game because even though Washington has hung in, they've played much better. It's just kind of teetering right now, right? It is, and Washington's defense has given them a chance, yeah. right? The offense is sputtering a little bit on the Washington side, but it seems like the, d the defense of Dallas has really taken all the energy. They are flying high. They had a great series there, forcing some negative plays on penalties and getting after Carson Wentz. This defense needs to come through once again if Washington wants to keep this thing within one score. They're bringing the big fullback with Farniok. Rushes all day. Loading up. Going deep for Brown. He's got it. Inside the 20. Yeah, sometimes you can just feel it, KB. The, the momentum swings to one side. The defense gets a huge stop, and you take a shot. In this case, Noah Brown lined up over Fuller in the slot. Little token play action. What a great throw right on the money. Dallas sensed they had something brewing here, and they went for the shot, and they got it. 45 yards up top to Brown, who now has a new career high in receptions, by the way, with 17. Getting his chance this year, and he's producing. And we got a penalty flag. False start. Offense number 86. Five-yard penalty. First down. It's only the second on Dallas here today. And Noah Brown, we talked about Amani Cooper going to Cleveland. And, you know, CeeDee Lamb, the number one receiver. And Noah Brown is the guy who's benefited, especially with Gallup being out the first few games. He had not gotten a lot of playing time. A guy that broke his leg at Ohio State. Didn't have a lot of time there. He's having a good start to this year. Here they'll run it to Elliott on the left side. Not much there. Hmm. Zach Martin yeah. is the one who's a little sluggish getting up now. Looked like he kind of got rolled up on. He was on the backside of that run. Looked like some of the garbage kind of came into his right leg. Hmm. 
We talked at the start of the show about how good they've been health-wise up front. The continuity they've been able to play with, big reason for their success. Let's take a look what happened. You see Martin, oh yeah. Oh, he rolled his ankle. Yeah, kind of the action was coming. He was chasing the play from the backside. He stepped on his own guy's foot and rolled his ankle. That was kind of a fluke play. Traditionally in those linemen, there's a lot of bodies on the ground and guys falling into you, but you don't see that very often. Stepping on your own player's foot. Five-time All-Pro, and you hope that he's okay. So Matt Farniak, who started a couple games at left guard, He's played fullback a lot today. Now he goes over at right guard to replace Zach Martin. So it's 68 in there for Dallas. Second and 16. Rush floats one complete. C.D. Lamb. And Lamb down near the 16-yard line to bring up third down. Nice job here by Washington. They gave up the big play on first down. Have settled in. Had the benefit of the offsides false start on on Dallas on the on the ensuing first down they find themselves they got to hold them to a field goal here they've got to keep this as a one score game based on what we've seen out of their offense on the other hand Dallas they can they can smell it here making this a two score game be huge Rush directing traffic, trying to make it pay off, going over the middle. It is caught by Brown again, but he's going to be short of a first down. And now it looks like there's no decision at all as Mike McCarthy sends the field goal unit out on a fourth and two. Well, they, they bent a little, but they didn't break. And again, give credit, Jack Del Rio, this defense here in Washington, they're giving their team a chance. They'd like to see the offense contribute a little bit here down the stretch, but after a a big play on first down to Noah Brown for them to hold them here to a field goal attempt is a huge, huge win. Sure is. 28 yards for Brett Maher. He's got two field goals today. And the kick is booted right through. But the Washington D holds, and as Greg, you pointed out, it's still a one-score game. 15-7, to Dallas here from Arlington. Moderate to severe exit. Well, really a sad week for the Cowboys family because their former tight end Gavin Escobar and a fellow rock climber lost their lives in a rock climbing accident that in Southern California on Wednesday. Escobar played for the Cowboys for a few years, also played for the Ravens, former tight end, 31 years old. So sad. Our thoughts go out to Gavin's wife, his two children. Terrible. All right, so Washington's D keeps it a one-score game with that stand, down eight. It's been fun. You talked all game. You started this game talking about how Micah Parsons, no disrespect to Aaron Donald, but might be the best defensive player in the league. It's been fun watching him move around. And what's so rare is for an elite player to be able to play so many different spots and really have no drop-off, right? He can play off the ball as a traditional linebacker, which is really where everyone expected his big impact last year as a rookie. But we've seen him more than ever this year line up on the defensive end and rush the passer. Kind of where he is here. Saw him line up in the slot, guard Terry McLaurin. Run to Gibson, and that is not going to do very much. Donovan Wilson was there. So where's he been, Greg? Well, you're going to see him here. He's lined up out in the slot. He gets walked away in an empty set. Now he's an edge rusher. He's got to rush the passer. Now he lined up with this was the third down last series. Lines up over the nose, gives him a lot of multiple looks there. Just Dan Quinn's having a blast right now, figuring out how to get the best out of this young, talented player he has. Sometimes when you have a guy like this that you're responsible for, it can be a little stressful. You want to make sure you maximize his potential, but I think so far in a little over one season, I think they've done just that. Wentz. Steps up, delivers high and incomplete. 
Micah Parsons and Dan Quinn's were in a pretty good mix, huh, EA? Oh, yeah. And Micah Parsons telling me this week, Dan Quinn, he took my career to a whole new level. The vision he had for me, the vision I had for myself is completely different. That vision went through the roof. He said he knew he knew I had the talent and the potential, and we advanced it to a whole new level. Micah telling Dan Quinn, I'm going where you go. That's the ty type of love and faith he has in his decor, guys. Well, let's watch him here on third and nine. Stunt, Wentz, escapes, looking, throw, he's got a man, it is caught for a first down. Dotson found a zone, he got free, and he moves the chains for Washington. And if they, if Washington ever needed a big play, this was, uh, this was it. You're going to see Dante Fowler, he comes almost unblocked. Nice job there by Carson Wentz to buy time. What a good job there by Jahan Johnson. He's covered initially, Brown kind of... Gets his eyes on the quarterback and slubs off, and Carson Wentz gets that ball over by about six inches. Man, I feel like the whole sideline just took a big, deep breath. They needed that offensive spark there. 31 yards. Here's Williams hopping over people. Still on his feet is Jonathan Williams inside the 20. Wow, a little burst from the seventh year back. Sometimes it just takes one play to spark you. That's what the completion on third down was to Dotson. Now Williams in there running through contact. You see Washington, we saw the success on their scoring drive in the first half, going up tempo. Give it to him again. Up the middle, that's not going to be much. Donovan Wilson came in to make that play after a short game. But Carson Wentz talked about the things he can do. This is what he can do. Yeah, we, Ron Rivera told us this offseason, when they were looking for their quarterback, they said he had all the traits that we wanted in the position. Big arm big physical presence can run can do all the things we're looking for out of our quarterback and all those traits kind of came out in that that last third down the team's kind of on the ropes broke down protection by time scramble drill find themselves now down in the red zone second and eight on the fake pressure Wentz in deep trouble throws it away that was heavy pressure from Donovan Wilson. He's another guy that's been all over the place. And this is going to be really interesting, KB, whether or not they say this is intentional grounding or not. But you mentioned Donovan Wilson. He can play kind of a linebacker safety hybrid role. He gets to Wentz quick. And you can see the officials talking whether or not. So Logan Thomas was kind of in the area, but the ball was thrown way over his head. He ran towards the ball. Very smart play. What's asked Mike Pereira? Mike, was Logan Thomas close enough there? I don't think so. Intentional grounding. Offense number 11. There was no receiver in the area. The ball replaced that spot of the foul. Lost it down. Third down. All right, so you're going to see Logan Thomas. He's right here in the wing. He's blocking. Now, when Carson Wentz goes, he sees his quarterback, and he's trying to get out. But you see the ball's going to land way out here on the sideline. Logan Thomas is running over to the official saying, I'm right here, but they didn't buy it. So this is one of those times now, Carson Wentz, his veteran presence, he's been here before. It's third and plus 20. Get enough to make this a more manageable field goal attempt if your first read down the field's not there. They might have moved. They did. I think Samuel Cosme, the right tackle, moved early. Boy, oh boy. False start. Offense number 76. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Nine penalties for 71 yards. Yeah, and so many of these penalties, you know, they're viewed as self-inflicted, right? Pre-snap penalties, but so much is the threat of this Dallas defense. The threat of their pass rushers, these tackles, these linemen are trying to get out of their stance. It's tough duty.
They got to get to the 10. They're going to set it up McKissick. McKissick gets a couple of blocks and then is drilled down to the 26. But at the very least, it makes it a much more doable field goal. I think that was the intention. I think that's a really good call there by the offensive coordinator, Scott Turner. Play for the field goal. You're down eight. Answer the three points Dallas just had on the previous drive. It's third and 27. And that's a nice play call there. Smart decision. Make the decision for your quarterback. That's a catch and throw. Sorry about that, Greg. First field goal try by Sly all year. Wild. 45-yarder. Well within his range. Kick is up, and it is good. Plenty of leg on that one, and Washington cuts it to 15-10 to here in the third. And we'll be right back after these messages from Progressive and Lowe's. I remember you saying, I won't forget the life jacket. Who talks like that? You apparently. Can we just, can we watch the replay? I would love it. This What Really Happened replay is brought to you by Progressive. One thing no one would challenge, protecting your home and auto with Progressive. Wow, that is embarrassing. Yeah, a little bit. From out of the blue, every room can be more innovative. With some of that, and a whole lot of this. Meet our exclusive dent and scratch resistant Stainmaster laminate. Check out our most innovative products, only at Lowe's. Well, for those of you who had Joey Sly on your fantasy team, you're like, oh, my goodness, he's got a field goal. But in reality, think about momentum, Greg. Noah Brown catches a bomb of a pass. Cowboys have all the momentum. They're held to a field goal. And then Washington, even though, again, bad penalties, it's only a five-point game. Yeah, the swings of an NFL game is what makes it so exciting, right? The second one team looks like they've taken control. It just takes one quick flip, and it seems like the pendulum swings the other side. That's what makes it so fun. Just let these games play out. It's fun to watch. Slide to kick it off. That is a rocket. Well out of the end zone, and so Dallas will take over on their own 25. We started the broadcast talking about Cooper Rush, and... One of three Cowboy quarterbacks ever to start. First three starts, 3-0. Three and oh. See his numbers. How's he done in your eyes today? I think he's done well. Of course, he's been bailed out. He's had two interceptions that have been, you know, been negated due to penalties. But I think for the most part, he's played pretty well, right? I think the question is, does his ability to play and keep this offense on track help with the Dak Prescott recovery? We'll see how that plays out. But I think with this run game, his mastery of the offense, I think he's done a good job. Elliott tries to get through. Not much there. Well, you think about this for these two proud franchises, right? I mean, this was this was at the height of rivalries back in the day. The point is, it's been a long time since back in the day. You're talking 13 Super Bowl appearances from 70 to 96. Zip, which is hard to believe. Zip since. On the fake, Rush has time, loading up, going deep again, and it is incomplete. There's a penalty flag. Gallup, the intended receiver, there was double coverage, and there's a penalty on Washington. I think they're going to say that William Jackson, he's in pretty good position. He stays Pass in phase. Defense number three. The ball be placed at spot of the foul, automatic first down. Yeah, you see here, see the little two-hand tug to pull himself through? He doesn't need to do it. He's in good position. He's got vision of the ball. Just go up and high point it and make the play. He doesn't need that pull. I think live, we were all kind of surprised. It looked like he had gotten there, but on review, I think it's a good call. Ten penalties for the command. They had 12 penalties in three games, so they, they hadn't done this the first three games, but hasn't been good for them today. 38-yard penalty. Elliott. Well, stutter up the middle to the 30. You know, their, their rush selection today has been interesting, right? You know, there's been Pollard's been getting a lot more carries this year. Today it's been really on Elliott's shoulders. 14 carries for him, 42 yards. Pollard only six carries, seven yards. Yeah, I think each game, Kellen Moore is trying to figure out what that puzzle looks like in the run game. You know, is it more of a downhill zone gap scheme run right out of defense? Obviously, that's Ezekiel Elliott's forte. We've seen him do that for a long time. 
Pollard is more of their home run hitter. We've seen him try to get him in the screen game, get him out in space. I think a lot of it is the matchups and the approach. Yeah, they don't have to snap it. There was a one second difference with the play clock, and so they'll let it run to the end of the third quarter. Cowboys, five point lead, and they're on the move. Well, Washington came into this game off a dreadful performance against Philadelphia. They knew they had to control the ball on the ground and limit mistakes, stay in the game. They haven't limited mistakes, but they have controlled the game on the ground and made a couple big plays, and their defense has played very, very well. And so the Cowboys, with a 15-10 lead, Cooper Rush with the touchdown pass today to Michael Gallup. We start the fourth quarter, second and five, they're on the move here after that big pass interference penalty. Four-man rush. Pressure on rush. Fires. Call for the touchdown. C.D. Lamb. You want a clinic and route running? Watch this. C.D. Lamb. A little post corner. Back to the post. William Jackson saying, how many moves are you going to make? Watch. Set it in. Out. Back across his face. You don't get open in the NFL like that very often. What a play. A lot of talk about is this the coming out party for C.D. Lamb. Tell you what, it's pretty good. Extra point is up and good. Largest lead of the day. 30-yard strike to Lamb. That was some route. He's got six catches, 97 yards, and a touchdown, and here it is again. Great job here by Cooper Rush. Looking off, they've got two high safeties, right? So he knows Dalton Schultz is going to take the front side safety. So now here's the zone he's got to throw. But with this double move by C.D. Lamb, once Cooper Rush sees 31, Cam Curl get pulled down by the tight end Schultz, he just lets it rip, and that's a big-time throw. And that is about as good a post route as you can run. Look at who the top cheerleader is, Dak Prescott, right there. Those guys are friends. They've been together now since 2017, rooting on each other. And Lamb, you know, it's almost like Greg, after he had those three drops against the Giants last week, you know, and you can hear the, the Cowboys fans, wait a second, he's a, not a number one. And then the second half he went off, obviously, and, and I feel like now he's saying, oh, I am a number one. You know, sometimes adversity brings out different things in different guys. It causes some guys to crumble, and it causes some guys to elevate. And I think since that early struggles last week in the first half with the drops, CeeDee Lamb's been the engine of this offense to finish the Giants game and all day today. Milne from his own goal line. Looking to make something happen and not going to do it. Tackled short of the 20-yard line by Peyton Hendershot, the rookie. Well, this October on Fox and FS1, National League's biggest stars battle it out the road to the Fall Classic. The National League Division Series begins October 11th, only on Fox and FS1. Can't wait for that. Look forward to being part of that coverage. Glad to have you aboard today. Our director, Rich Russo, our producer, Richie Zions, our entire NFL on Fox crew, Richie's He's, he's he's having a rough he's day. The Mets have lost his first tense. two in Atlanta, so we got to see what happens tonight. We'll see the Mets and the Braves in the playoffs. Right I, now, it's the Cowboys up by 12. Early in this fourth quarter, Wentz out to the far side. Oh, good move by Samuel, kind of dancing around, and oh, that was nifty. Out across the 30 to the 33, and a good start to this drive. Yeah, you said it, Curtis Samuel. He's got incredible run after catch ability. You see Washington go back to their tempo. This has really been where they've had their most success today. Here in the fourth quarter, down two scores. They've got to force the issue a little bit. Another quick pass, Samuel again looking for blocks. And he's forced out of bounds by Brown after a pickup of a couple yards. So, so much of this approach, you know, we, we Ron Rivera and Scotty Turner, they told us this was going to be their approach today. Slow the game down, stay in it till the end. 
The problem is the defense, it's all contingent on how well they play. They've played great, but now they find themselves down two full scores. So now it's, hey, do we have the patience and the ability to be so run game oriented, knowing that we find ourselves down here by 12 in the fourth quarter? It's going to be a big test to see if they can really stay true to this philosophy throughout the rest of this fourth quarter. Run it here, Gibson. Oh, that was a really good cutback. There was nothing there, and Antonio Gibson going to pick up five. A third and short. I'm going to go hurry up here. A lot of people call this the Jordan package. It doesn't allow, so it's going from second to third down, right? 23, the Jordan package. They don't want Dan Quinn to be able to get his pass rushers in, get his elaborate third down package in, so they're going to go hurry up, up tempo between second and third down here and see if they can pick it up. Micah Parsons lined up right over the football right now. Try to run it in. That is swarmed. Yeah, obviously, they thought they could catch him in a personnel group that was light in the box. You mentioned it. Micah Parsons, Leighton Van Der Esch were both right in the A gaps. You're going to see him here. So they got guys in every gap. Donovan Wilson, it's a tough run look. Just nowhere to go. Be curious if Carson Wentz has the ability to try to get out of that play, take advantage of that heavier box, and try to get the ball on the perimeter. But now they got a punt. Booming kick by Tress Way. Turpin fair catch right around the 10. Well, Cooper Rush trying to become the only Cowboy quarterback to ever win his first four starts. Feeling pretty good about it. He's up 12, and they got the ball again. leading Washington 22 to 10 as we welcome you back and of course Kevin mentioned it earlier Cooper Rush and what he could do today becoming the first Dallas quarterback to win his first four starts uh, Cooper Rush saying this week you know I've been in and out of this organization for five years he said that feels like forever and of course it does when you've been cut you've been re-signed and even on Sundays guys you've been sitting at home out of the league I asked him you're three and zero right now what does that mean to you and he goes I just want to be 4-0. Kev, he credited everyone on this team for helping him get where he is right now. Yeah, I love it. You told that he called it precious, the opportunity, and he's taking advantage of it as Pollard gets wrestled down by Jonathan Allen. I mean, look, he, anytime your backup quarterback comes in, you just want to survive. But I think you pointed out early in the game, they're not doing, he's running the offense like it were normal. Absolutely, and, and you can, oh, we, we mentioned it at the start of the broadcast, anytime you want to evaluate how a coach or a, or a staff feels about their backup, just watch how much communication he does. Watch how many checks and getting in and out, right? Even this case, he's getting CeeDee Lamb lined up. He's on the wrong side. He's in full command, and then on top of that, he can make some really good throws. Pollard. Trying to get to the edge. Penalty flag. This might be coming back at least a little bit. Not much farther Holding. you can go. Offense number 86. Half the distance penalty. Second down. Yeah, it's on Dalton Schultz. Yeah, sometimes on the edge, the ball, you're expecting it to pour up inside. You can see Dalton Schultz. He's on the inside. The second that ball bounces, we've all had tendencies there, KB, to grab a little cloth. You don't want your guy to make the tackle. You just hope that they don't see it. But that was pretty clear. Have to get to the 19. Rush batted away in the air, and it's incomplete. Whoa! That could have been a disaster for Dallas. It was knocked up by Jonathan Allen, I believe. But nonetheless, this defense makes another stand to give them a chance here in this game. Yeah, it was Jonathan Allen. He came on a little stunt. He's unblocked. If he looks up, that ball, I think, fell right at his feet. You can see him. He comes around the outside. Nice job by Sweat. Caving in the side. Take a look where this ball bounces. Oh, he just cut out. That he, ball landed only a couple feet from him. He couldn't find it. He looked left. I think it was to his right. Oh, it's a bad punt, too. Washington gets a break, and it's out of bounds, short of the 40. Maybe way short. We'll see where they mark this. 
And so Anger, their Pro Bowl punter, oh, look at, forget the 40, it's going to be at the 30. Well, Washington gets a huge stand and now a big break. Just a 22 yard punt from the normally excellent punter. I think he just missed it. Yeah, sometimes you just shank it. There's no real pressure. Protection looks good. Sometimes they have these punters really try to directional the ball towards the sideline to reduce the amount of space the returner has. He just caught it off the side of his foot. Yeah. Well, if there's ever a chance for Washington, here it is. Get back in this game. Down by 12. Gibson spinning. Good run. To the 25. Well, Terry McLaurin, you're wondering where has he been? They try to get him involved early, but he has not been involved often. Just two catches for 15 yards. And it seems like when we've looked, Greg, Dallas has pretty good coverage on him. They've had really good coverage on him, and it's really been a, a bunch of different guys. You know, you see Diggs here playing him more in man. First clip was kind of a cloud with the safety over the top. They've done a nice job changing the look. Sometimes they're playing him one-on-one -on -one man. Sometimes they want to get him into more of a zone shell and allow multiple guys to control him. See this time at the top of the screen, he's one-on-one -on -one with, with Diggs. Just get the playoff. Quick throw outside is Logan Thomas. Stretches forward. He's got a first down. Nice job there pre-snap by Carson Wentz. Good play design. He got a good man tell. He knew when he brought Logan Thomas over there as the number two receiver. He knew Diggs was going to be man. This is just one-on-one. -on -one, little slant flat. See Hooker kind of have to avoid the slant by the outside receiver. Good play design. Simple. But the motion is what gives him the pre-snap tell where to go with the ball. They go jumbo. They're going to run it to Gibson on the left and fighting for every yard. Got about three on that carry. He's had a good game running. 11 carries, 45 yards, and now we have an injured Cowboy, and it's Quinton Bohana, the defensive tackle. And while they tend to him, we'll take a break. Cowboys by 12, but the Commanders, big chance here to get back in it. Adam. Well, Quinn Bohanna walking off gingerly and hope he's okay. Starting defensive tackle for the Cowboys. 9.50 to go from Arlington. 22 10 Dallas, but after a great defensive hold and then a shank punt, Washington has a golden opportunity here. This has got to be. Fourth down, go for a territory, right? If they don't get it, I think it's got. To, I think it's at least in the back of Ron Rivera's head. I think as long as somehow they don't take a big loss here, negative play or something, I think if they find themselves in a fourth, you know, fourth down two or three, I think he's got to consider it a field goal here. Steel keeps it a two-score gain yeah. at nine. Second down and seven. Gibson remains in the backfield. Here's Wentz. Wentz backpedaling, throwing incomplete. Tried to get it to Jahan Dotson. He's got the touchdown in this same. And we got a penalty in the secondary. Prior to the pass, holding defense number three. Five yard penalty. Automatic first down. Oh, it's on Anthony Brown. So Washington, the penalties have killed them. It's only the third penalty on Dallas, but it gives them a first. Yeah, you see Brown here in the slot. Matched up with Dotson. That's who Wentz ended up going. Now you can see why they were a little off. Nice job there by Dotson. Off the ball, releasing. Kind of put Brown on his heels, and he kind of grabbed him. That's where Wentz was trying to go from the beginning. And as you said, now we've seen both teams commit some pretty costly defensive penalties in the back end to keep drives alive. Now you just heard the great audio. Got to finish this. No question if you're the commanders. Gibson. Yard and a half. Yeah, sometimes you got to pick your chances. Right now, Micah Parsons is on the sideline as the defensive line kind of rotates to try to keep guys fresh. Imagine they're going to try to bring him on if they can force a third down. So if you're Scott Turner, 
Second and eight, second and nine. You want to drop back. The best pass rusher on the field, on the sideline. This could be a good opportunity. Wentz going for the corner. It is caught. Is he in? No. Unbelievable catch by Samuel, but he could not get his feet in. And it's third down. What an effort. I mean, both guys do a great job high pointing it. You can see he kind of has a David Tyree helmet catch there, but he's clearly out of bounds. But that was their shot. Micah Parsons back in now here, so you got to be a little more careful in your protections, but. They gave Curtis Samuel a shot there. He went up and got it. Just couldn't quite get his feet down. Third and nine. Wentz in trouble. He is sacked. Dante Fowler got there. Ball may have come loose, but it looks like Washington still has it in fourth down. We've talked about it all day. You find yourself in a must drop back situation and they can get fresh rushers on the field. Dan Quinn's going to dial it up. That's a tough matchup. That down distance. I'm going to keep Carson Wentz here on the field. This is interesting. We mentioned that it's four down territory, but it's fourth and 15. And now timeout. I think uh, it's a tough call because, I mean, in reality, field goal really doesn't do you any good. I mean, it's still, it's still a two-point game. But fourth and 15, that's a tough ask. So... What would you do here? I mean, a field goal makes it a nine-point game. You're going to still need to get the ball and score twice, which they can. Washington's D has done a great job. I don't fourth and 15 is a tough ask. Yeah, fourth and 15, the percentages of converting that, let alone in the red zone, aren't very good. We said it a few plays ago. They had to make sure that the fourth town attempt was in some sort of short fourth and three, fourth and four, a manageable situations. But the incomplete on, on second down, and then, of course, the sack on third down really changes this whole this whole possession. Well, they are going. <laughs> Wentz going for the end zone. It is incomplete. Trayvon Diggs was there, and the Cowboys take over. I mean, who else does such a good job getting his hands, deflecting passes, coming down to INT. When he threw it, when Wentz threw it, you're going to see they're going to try to run a little corner out in the back end zone. When he threw it, I thought he had a shot. He had a little window back there, but Diggs' ability... Gets away with a little bit of a pull with that right arm. Kind of threw Terry McLaurin off. It was not a bad throw. It's just a great play by a really good player who has a knack for finding the ball. Now the Cowboys, a clock is their ally. Rush says, forget that. I'm going deep, and it's incomplete. And a penalty flag. Try to get Gallup deep. Jackson on the coverage, and let's see. Pass interference, defense number three. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul, automatic first down. We see Jackson again with that hand just reaching and grabbing the back of the guy's collar. This is the previous pass breakup. I mean, look at the elevation, digs. I mean, just hot. You talk about high point in the ball, cutting off the angle. If he doesn't make that play, that ball falls into the it's, it's a touchdown. That's just a really good play by a good player. This previous pass interference call, we've seen Jackson now twice kind of lose himself with the ball in the air and kind of panic and pull the offensive player back. Elliott, big hole up to midfield. 
Think about Washington. They got 136 yards in penalties today. Tough to win like that. Hey, next Sunday on Fox, big time doubleheader kicks off. The Falcons taking on Tom Brady and the Bucks, and then America's Game of the Week. Greg will be in L.A. The Cowboys take on Matthew Stafford and the defending champs. Next Sunday at one, it kicks off on Fox. Check for the games in your area. Can't wait for that one. Uh, Noah Brown took himself out of the game. Not sure where he got banged up there. See if we could take a look. Second and three after the big run by Elliott. Fake it to him here. Rush going up top again. Trying to get Lamb involved. Knocked away at the last second by Jackson. You want to play corner? You want to play corner in the NFL? You better have a short memory. Because the second you show a little chink in the armor there, they're gonna get you. William Jackson does a great job playing catch up. See the better job he does there with that offhand. Not pulling with his right hand and just allowing the left hand to come through and make the deflection. It's a nice job there after a couple PI struggles by Jackson coming back. They tested him. It's a nice job bouncing back by him. So a third down and three. He's going to run it to Elliott and he gets stymied. Jamin Davis came up and made a nice play. And here comes the punt team. Boy, oh boy, once again, this Washington defense. I mean, they, they've really done all they could possibly do to give their team a chance to win this game. Yeah, I mean, as far as Washington on defense, it's really been the penalties, right? We've yeah. seen two long pass interference calls. We've seen two defensive holding calls in the gate, two takeaways with the interceptions. Just untimely penalties. But other than that, they've played very soundly. The problem for them is the Cowboys' D has been better. Here's Anger, had the missed punt last time. This one's a good one. Good hang time inside the 10. And it's going to be down right across the 10-yard line. Well, this Cowboys D is really, really good. They get to the quarterback, Greg. They do, and we talked coming in. The big storyline offensively was their protection plan. You know, they got a little exposed last week, had some struggles against Philly. You have to play perfect offense to not give Dallas the opportunity to just pin their ears back and come after you and between the penalties and the lost yardage on early downs Washington's just found themselves in so many of those must pass drop back situations and I don't care who you are Dallas's defense out there that's a tough matchup for anybody Six oh eight to play. They need two scores. Start out here with McKissick, and that's a short game. You know, well, we've seen the play by Diggs. Seen a couple of them today. Obviously, as the interception, he had that play in the end zone to knock it away and save a touchdown. He's been on Terry McLaurin a lot, and he's by and large shut him down. Wentz near side incomplete interesting we're talking to Dan Quinn and he said he's been working a lot with Diggs because Diggs it's amazing going after the ball but teams attack him because he takes a lot of chances and he's been working with him on the double moves and kind of comparing him to Richard Sherman say hey no one went after Richard Sherman like that trying to get him to that level yeah sometimes with the good you have to take a little bit of the bad and, and the reason that Diggs is so good is because he's so aggressive attacking the ball right he's jumping routes he's playing with depth and coming downhill also in Diggs' mind, this pass rush is his second move protection, right? He knows the quarterback only has so long to wait on those deeper routes because of how good these guys up front can rush. Third down. Here comes the pressure. Wentz over the middle, and it's intercepted again. It is the rookie, Deron Bland. Had never played a defensive snap until today, and now he's got his first NFL interception. You're going to see Carson Wentz. He's trying to let this guy develop here into the inside second window. Deron Bland does a great job reading it. Watch right here on that hash. He just undercuts that ball. Trying to throw it there to Curtis Samuel. 
What a play by Bland. You mentioned the rookie. Let's take a look here at Parsons. He got up a little slow here. He got caught up in that kind of the wash of the O-line. Got to hope he's okay. But what a play by the rookie, Deron Bland, coming in to the injury to Jordan Lewis. Elliott, right side. Cowboys have a chance to ice this with 5.23 to go. So he's trying to throw this ball here in the slot to Curtis. And when Samuel comes out, I think he's expecting Curtis to come a little bit more into the middle of the field. That outside hook player, in that case, Bland just really squeezed it. Had enough time to undercut the route. You see Micah Parsons there on the sideline be intended to. Well, mm -hmm. obvious concern for him. Hope that he's okay. Second down and eight. It is Rush standing back there throwing, and there's a collision down inside the five, and it's incomplete. This is Curl and Schultz running into each other. Yeah, I think William Jackson actually was defending the outside receiver. Just him and Dalton Schultz just accidentally just collided into each other. Cooper Rush is lucky that ball wasn't picked. Freeze obviously determined it was inadvertent contact. But I think William Jackson took the brunt of that hit from Dalton Schultz. Well, here's the thing. Washington can hold to a field goal here. It still would be a two-score game, two-possession game, right? Third and eight. Rush. Delivers, and it is caught. Boy, it's close. See if he got enough for the first down. Jake Ferguson, the rookie. And now the spot. And if you don't get it, if you're Mike McCarthy, you're going for it. I would, I would have said yes, but he looks like he's running the field goal team on. I think you have fourth and just a couple feet. I think you got a chance to put this thing away. But as you said, he's thinking with the way Washington's offense has been held together by this Dallas team, put yourself up 15, four minutes to go. He's betting on his defense right now and can't say I blame him. 29-yard attempt for Brett Maher. He's got four field goals today. He's been on the money. And so with 3.51 to go, it's 25 to 10. Dallas now a little skirmish. And it's broken up rather quickly. So still a two possession game, but the way Dallas' defense is playing, it feels like it's about 30 possessions. Yeah, it just. It's hard to see Washington coming alive this late after what we've seen kind of trans, you know, unfold here throughout the course of this game. But listen, we've seen crazier things happen. I mean, we've seen teams find some magic late in games when they were all but left for dead. So if they ever need Carson Wentz to come up with some magic. This is this is the time. But with this rush and this secondary, Dan Quinn, it's a tall task. You know, we talked to DQ the other day, and you know, just talk about the defense and the growth of it. Obviously, last year they were so good getting the turnovers. It was their bread and butter. Obviously, they had the pass rush, too. But he said, you know, it's I feel like we can communicate better now than at any point last year, and it's allowed us to do a whole lot more. What did he mean by that? Yeah, so so much of Dan, and you got to give credit to Dan Quinn. He's really evolved after his time ended in Atlanta. We all know his historically good defenses in Seattle. He really did some internal soul searching on his system and his scheme, how he wants to be a little bit more multiple. I'll tell you what, for as good as they were last year, for them to be able to communicate, get in and out of all these different looks and pressures and, and fronts that we've seen today, them throw at Washington, it's scary how much better they can even be. Well, you look at this game and the story of it, and it's been pretty close throughout. Washington took a lead here. Jahan Dotson, the rookie, his fourth touchdown catch of the year, but this was a beaut. Cooper Rush rolling out, finds Michael Gallup, his first touchdown, his first game today, back from the ACL injury, and then CeeDee Lamb, as Greg Olson said, put on a route-running clinic. Second TD of the day by Rush. And Brett Maher's got a career high with four field goals. So it's 25 to 10, two possession game, 351 left. Washington still has a chance, but they need some chunks here. Here's Wentz. 
Get over the middle, McKissick. Out to the 30, gain of five. And Carson Wentz is going to have to be patient here. You know, they, they, your instincts tell you you're down so much, you got to push the ball downfield. But look how deep this umbrella is that Dan Quinn is putting. This secondary is going to keep everything in front of him, make him hit checkdowns. Their side caught by Thomas, and he's out of bounds with a first down. Mike Parsons coming back in, so that's very good news. Now the Cowboys have two sacks today. But it just has so much pressure and they've been so tough to throw on. We've seen Trayvon Diggs with an interception and knocking a ball away, which was a potential touchdown. The rookie, Deron Bland, playing because of the injury to Jordan Lewis in the nickel. He's got his first pick. Wentz this time has time and that's not going to go very far. Logan Thomas has the catch almost had his head taken off by Anthony Barr. I think it's worth noting Anthony Barr right we've seen him play for a long time in the league here for the first time in Dallas. He's played a lot today and I think that's a his development his ability to come in and play alongside Vander Esch see him here playing backer. It allows Micah Parsons to not play as much off the ball like we've seen early this year. Pressure Wentz throws and it's way out of bounds. Deami Brown was close, but obviously that was uncatchable. Yeah, Barr's an interesting sign, right? I mean, he missed some time last year with a knee injury. I mean, this guy's had four Pro Bowls in his career. He had a torn pec a couple years ago, so he's had a couple years with some injuries, but he is versatile and big and long. So Dan Quinn just sent him on a little inside pressure there. He's the one who got the hit on Carson Wentz to force that early throw. Gives them a lot of versatility. When you have guys on defense with a mind like Dan Quinn, and you have guys who can play multiple positions at all levels, the opportunities are really endless. 2.51 to go. Third and seven. Obviously four down territory. Wentz rolling out, coming near side. Bates, the tight end, has it. And he's going to go out of bounds just short of a first down. And so a must go here on a fourth and short. Yeah, we'll see what what play they have for this situation on every play caller sheet. They have our must have it's right our critical downs fourth and short third and short. We've seen him have a couple struggles today in some of these situations trying to run the ball. Commanders have got to have it fourth and two. It's that same look see all the guys up in the gaps. Both A gaps are taken. This time they back out. Wentz back foot, lofting it down the sideline. It's Diggs again. How many times is Trayvon Diggs going to make a monster play? Cowboys take over. Terry McLaurin is saying, What else do I have to do? I'm open against every guy in the league. I'm open. He gets just enough. Let's see, does he get a little deflection? Yep. It's just enough. If not, that ball lands between the one seven. What can you say about Trayvon Diggs? They've gone after him today. Carson Wentz has not shied away, and there's no question who's won that matchup. Yeah, how's how's his day? Interception, passes, defense. Two of them coming on fourth down. I mean, he is a big play corner. And now the Cowboys are going to run this thing out. Elliott it goes backwards. I mean, you think about we're we're having the discussion about Diggs, who's already great. What he did last year. I mean. He, Led the league in interceptions last year. Made the Pro Bowl, was an All Pro. And Dan Quinn thinks he can be better. I, I mean, that's insane. But like, this just goes to show you his skill level. You forget he was a wide receiver in college. It's, well, it's he, pl he plays the defensive back position like a receiver. Yes. You just don't see as great athletes as the rest of these guys are, the top names in the league. You just don't see guys play the ball with such comfort that Diggs is able to play with. And it's scary. I mean, Dan Quinn told us Micah Parsons is better than last year. Trayvon Diggs is better than last year. The defense in general is improved. It's, it's a scary group. Elliott just smartly slides down. Washington's got one timeout left. And they're going to take it here. 
I mean, just look at Diggs. I mean, we know about the interceptions. He's got more than anybody since he came in the league last year with 13. But here's him just making plays on the ball. Yeah, this was that critical fourth down, fourth and long on the previous possession. And this was the last fourth down. I mean, teams continue to go after him in critical downs. And all day today, he's come through. Talking with Al Harris. Secondary coach. Yeah, Al knew a thing or two about making plays on the ball. <laughs> tell you what, I watched Al run around in pregame warm-ups. He was working out with some of the guys, throwing passes, running routes. It looks like Al could suit up and play. He was running around before the game. He was in a full sweat. He's in great shape, man. <laughs> he looks like he could play. He does a great job with that group. I'll I mean, tell you, they got a good staff here in Dallas. Third and 12. Elliott just going to run this down to the two-minute warning. Oh, another game for Dallas without Dak, Dak Prescott, and they're about to go 3-0 and with Cooper Rush. Again, just so solid. 223 yards, two touchdowns, the defense playing great, and the Cowboys up 25-10 to with two minutes left from Arlington. getting creative with the music little Tom Petty running down the dream it has been a dream for Cooper Rush so far looking to go 4-0 first Cowboys quarterback start his career that way ever and the NFC East Greg is good again it's just like we expected that's what we predicted before the season no at e least I know I didn't Eagles undefeated <laughs> they win today the Giants are three and one they only lost to the Cowboys who are about to be three and one themselves so uh, yeah maybe the NFC East is back it's unbelievable. Unbelievable job on that segue there coming out. It was really professional. I, you know, every once in a while. That was well done. Every once in a while. Yeah, you got to feel good for Cooper Rush. I mean, to be a 4-0 as a starter, 3-0 this year. And it feels like a century ago. We all watched that opening night. Dallas lose right here to Tampa. Looked terrible on offense. Dak goes down. Man, it got, it got wild here for a minute. And all Cooper Rush has done is come in here and you know what? Settle down. And, you know, you heard EA tell us earlier in the game that Dak, you know, we saw the picture, his thumb a little swollen, and he even said to her, maybe I overdid it a little bit, you know, this week working back. If you're Dallas, you have no reason to rush him back. You give him an extra week the way they're playing and let him fully heal. Here's Wentz, desperation time, incomplete, no timeouts, down 15, 149 to go. I mean, look, if Dak is obviously healthy and ready to play, he's going to play. But if there is a question... Do you say, hey, let's be fully, I, I get it. He's he's plays hurt, the guy is a beast. But do you say get fully healthy one I, more week? I think you do. And, and I know that Jerry Jones caused some waves here in Dallas when he made that comment a couple weeks ago about his hope is that he has a quarterback controversy and people lost their minds. Well, what he meant was, I hope my backup plays so well, we're not desperate to throw Dak in there until he's ready. And I think this is exactly the scenario they would have asked for when Dak got injured and all the attention turns Richard's to this week in L.A. Defense number 90, five-yard penalty, second down. I, it's a pretty great story. I mean, he was the Cowboys cut him before the year. Now it was more of a rock, you know, they, they envisioned bringing him back. But, you know, he had he thrown three passes in his career until last year when he played that game on Halloween and had a game-winning drive to win in Minnesota. And he's just continued it this year with three excellent performances and the Cowboys about to be 3 and 0 this year with him. Wentz they give it to Brown. And Cowboys D still hitting. He's got enough for a first down. I think the the cool thing about the NFL is every player's journey to getting here is so uniquely different. Right? Yeah. I mean just look on the other side. Look at a guy like Carson Wentz, you know, coming out of school, high first round pick. He's arguably the MVP that year in Philly before he gets hurt. They go on and win the Super Bowl, and his journey since then has really changed. He's still alive, but he's past the line of scrimmage, just going to have to run and fall down. But it's just so cool to realize that not every guy needs to be a five-star recruit. Not every guy needs to be a number one overall pick. You can carve out a career in this league 
with just having a great attitude and a great approach. And Cooper Rush, I mean, is there a better way to describe him than that right there? Wentz just going to check one deep to Brown, who's covered like glue by Brown. Now, one way to describe him maybe after this year might be Rich. He's going to earn a contract. I can tell you that right now. The way he's playing, the way teams need a quarterback. How Don't you think? I do, and but how willing are you if you're Dallas? Of course, if he gets an opportunity to go compete to be a starter, that's, of course, what you'd want for him. But if you're Dallas, I don't know if you're willing to let him just walk out of here. The, the backup quarterback position in this league, how many guys have we seen go down, whether it's for extended period of time or just to get you through a couple games? That backup spot, you hope you never use them, but when you need them, man, are they important. Pressure again. Wentz underneath the base at Ted and up to the 30 up ended there. Time continues to run. This Dallas defense just been superlative all year long. Tell you what, I'm fired up for next week. Go out to L.A. Sign me up for that see one. See this, this Dallas team go up against the Rams in L.A. Bates again with 20 seconds to go and he'll get out of bounds with 18 seconds left. And you can make the argument that next week we're going to see the best two defensive players. We've talked a lot about, of course, Micah Parsons but on the other side of the field. I think Aaron Donald's going to have something to say about giving away that crown, but he could have the best defensive player. Best defensive players playing against one another. That should be a fun one. Parsons still out there. He wants a sack. That's why he's still out yeah. there. This is stat padding time, but for both teams, he wants a sack. Bates again. He's getting some catches. He loses a football and I think he got it back. He did. Brown forced the fumble. That should take us to the end of this game. And the Cowboys going to improve to three and one. With a 25 to 10 win and Mike McCarthy week one it looked grim. They get beat up by Tampa Bay. They lose Dak Prescott for an unforeseeable amount of time with a thumb injury. Well guess what Mike McCarthy rallied his troops and they've been great since then. Give him a lot of credit. 25 to 10. Cowboys over the commanders more to do from Arlington and we're back after this. NFC East is back Craig Olson. I didn't bring drugs here to sell on the street. We're running out of options.